with week two in the books. It's about who's pumped up and who got roughed up. We're going to start with the quarterbacks today and go through who's on the rise and who's on the fall. Who needs some help today on Locked On NFL Draft. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I'm your host, former NFL and AFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Tracy from Rogue Analytics and Locked On Chiefs. I'm also from Locked On 49ers. Uh, you guys can find us on social media, on Twitter. Find some more of our takes at Ryan Tracy NFL at Eric underscore Crocker. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day and also let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And we're starting with some quarterbacks today, and we'll see what else we get into. But we got some guys that are getting pumped up, some guys that are getting roughed up, especially at the quarterback position. And uh, I'm going to start with you, Ryan. Let us know what you got for us. Who's a almost like a riser and a faller? But I'd say roughed up is maybe they just had kind of a you know, more of a roughed up outing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there was plenty of weather this week, and there's plenty of situations. And I want to start with a situation because I'm really happy to see Sam Hartman get back out on the field for Wake. It was definitely a shock when he was like, "Hey, he's out. Like, we don't know indefinitely. We don't know what's going on." They they had to do a surgical operation. I don't know the details. I'm going to get into that, but it was kind of a surprise. Originally, thought the timeline was going to be October, but he was pretty roughed up early. He got back on the field. And, hey, way to do it, 300-plus yards, four TDs in your first outing. That's pretty impressive. And I know he's a guy that kind of flies under the radar that really isn't mentioned with a lot of the top prospects. But if he keeps that up, in a weight team that I think can make some noise, he might be in a position to actually raise his hand and say, hey, yeah, yeah, you all forgot about me, but I'm still here. I want to start with a guy that I'm going to say got roughed up. And really it's kind of two guys in the same game. One guy ended up having to take the loss, but you got Will Levis and Anthony Richardson. And there was a lot of buzz about Anthony Richardson and his performance uh, in the previous week against Utah. And everybody was yep. ranting and raving and, and really excited about what he is. You know, this big athlete, he, he was accurate and he didn't throw the ball a ton, but he was efficient and he used his legs and everything looked great until it did and it didn't against University of Kentucky. Only completed 14 out of 35 passes. A guy that was kind of all over the place and a little pressed, looked a little sped up uh, mentally. And for him, again, he's very young in the process of his maturity as a quarterback, especially at the SEC level, where things can definitely get a little fast for you. But, I mean, 143 yards, two interceptions. You know, uh, you expected a little bit more from him against Kentucky, and ultimately I think his down performance was probably the reason why K Kentucky won. So uh, I had to lead it off. I didn't want to start with a negative, but definitely Anthony Richardson, the guy with so much high hopes after what he did in the previous week against Utah, kind of got roughed up a little bit. Well, and I think this draws the distinction in the evaluation too. Week one, when he was so successful, it was a lot of athleticism, a lot of using his legs, right? That is his bread and butter. Here, I think what cost him in both the interceptions and ultimately the game was his decision-making. Yeah. I just don't think that he's reading well enough to understand what's safe for his arm talent and what's not. He's pushing the boundary. And, hey, maybe you read your own a little bit and you get a little hyped up and you, you want to make a few more throws. And maybe last week you might not try it. I think it felt like he was pushing himself. And he pushed himself right out of the, the envelope of what he's really steady and capable of. Yeah, that wasn't great. And I talked about Will Levis on the other side. He completed 13 out of 24 passes, uh, 200 yards, one touchdown, one interception. And he's another guy who's kind of getting acclimated to a new officer coordinator that got Rich Gangrillo in there from the NFL, still kind of running a similar offense. So you'd expect him to still be a little bit more efficient. And that was a game where his defense kind of had to kind of take control. Uh, we talked about Anthony Richardson. He had two interceptions. One was near the end zone kind of setting up Kentucky for a quick score right there. You want to see a lot more out of Levis, 
especially Levis. Now, mm -hmm. Richardson, this is a guy who's kind of a little bit more on the up and up, but yep. Levis, I expect him now to be more efficient. The tools are there. He has enough mobility, the arm strength, uh, running a pro-style offense, turning his back to a defense and having to make plays. We've seen him do all of those things. Now, can he start to do it a little bit more at a higher level? I think that's where he's at now in his progression. If he wants to be one of the top quarterbacks taken in the class, he's going to have to get a little bit more efficient with that. Yeah. He was in my, my preseason top five. He, I had him at number three behind the two big dogs. I'm sure we'll talk about them in the next segment. But I agree with you. Like I have high expectations for him. And I think Tyler Van Dyke is breathing down his neck. Obviously, uh, a couple of guys that aren't getting a lot of press, we'll talk about them later in the show. There's a lot of competition right now for that spotlight. And I think he's a guy that has it for right now. If he can't right the ship, he's going to lose some of that attention and really cost himself, I think, in the evaluation process. Yeah, we are going to talk about some more guys that are starting to make a little bit of an impact and more guys that are definitely on the up. But first, we want to talk to you about prize picks. And I love prize picks. I love you know, doing these things where you get to pick kind of like over unders on players and props and things like that. And prize picks, that's the spot for you. Right now, you can pick two to five players, and if they will go score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. And you're not competing against other people. So this is not me versus Ryan Tracy. All right. It's just you versus the projections that are available. And prize picks offers projections on any sport that you can watch and i'm not going to rattle some of them off nfl nba mlb nhl pga golf football men's ba college basketball women's college basketball soccer wnba esports you get it they have everything you need including nascar tennis mma everything all right entries can be made in 60 seconds or less it's easy it's safe and they have very fast withdrawals currently they are operating in over 30 states that's including our neighbors up north canada as well all right download the prize picks app right now or go to your pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports first time users can receive a 100 percent instant deposit match to up to 100 dollars while using the promo code locked on so what does that mean if you deposit 100 dollars, guess what prize picks they will give you a hundred dollars on top of that so now you got 200 dollars to play with now if you want to deposit $50, well, price picks, they're still going to match you. So you now you have $100. All right, so don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100 only at price picks. We also want to tell you about, you know, got some good stuff for you here, Athletic Greens. And this is something that I've been taking, all right? Athletic Greens is a daily vitamin that really gives you everything that you need all right so when i say vitamin a lot of people they take a bunch of different vitamins and all that stuff to get the greens in them that they need well with ag1 it's the only one that you need and the best part about it man gut health you definitely improve that they like to promote a healthy lifestyle it's friendly and whether you eat keto paleo vegan uh, dairy gluten-free well it covers all that it contains less than one gram of sugar so there's no GMOs, no nasty chemical or artificial anything in it while tasting good and giving you all the nutrients that you need. And for the price, it's great. It costs you less than $3 a day. You are investing in your health. That's one of the best things that you could do. The one thing I like to do with it is in the morning, after I get my morning workout in, I like to actually kind of put it in my protein shake. So I just take a little scoop, drop it in there. And boom, get everything that I need. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. They're recommended by professional athletes. It's trusted by leading the healthy experts such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervis. So they have everything you need right now. What you need to do is make it easy, which they're doing for you. Athletic Greens is going to give you one free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that is that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, guys, we want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen of the day and uh, diving back into some of these prospects. Guy on the plus side that I don't think is getting enough attention, it, it comes down to the fact that you play in the biggest conference in America. You play for a team that doesn't necessarily come to mind as soon as you say SEC, right? 
but they're always there. And I think the level of competition actually plays into this as well. Played Memphis first, played Arizona second. Will Rogers has nine touchdowns on the season and over 750 yards, and no one's saying a word about him. It comes with two interceptions, so maybe you're, you're worried about that, right? But the way that he attacks downfield, I think, is really eye-opening in that he's made some progression. I, I'd like to see his average depth of target come along a little bit, but he's not being talked about enough in an SEC that needs more competition, to tell you the truth. There's some question marks there, and I think he might be in for the long haul. I want to start to get more on the positive side of things as well and talk a little bit about Bryce Young, and he just did a terrific job, completed 27 out of 39 passes, almost 70%, but only 213 yards. And you can see early on, they're playing this game against Texas. This is Now, this is a game where we were expecting Texas to just run through it, right? I mean, excuse me, Alabama to run through yeah. Texas. And <laughs> Texas was inspired, man. That did man. not happen. Matter of fact, I think a lot of people could say, uh, I think Texas probably should have won. And there were some calls that didn't go their way no. that had a lot of people pretty upset. But watching it, Quinn Ewers, I was excited to see him. He got knocked out the game pretty early. Uh, his replacement filled in, did fine, did it good enough to keep kind of keep the ball rolling there. But Bryce Young, it, it was tough for him. And, and I'm fine with that. I think a lot of people might see that and think, oh, man, you know, this is a rough outing. Is he really the guy? Like, No, he's still the guy. And – Everything's not going to be perfect throughout a year. I think he did a tremendous job of really overcoming adversity in this game. And then when push came to shove and he needed to make some plays down the stretch, whether he was using his legs, using his arm, he did it. Put his team in position to be able to kick a field goal and win the game as time expired. So yeah. shout out to Bryce Young. He's one of the guys who, when we talk about you know being roughed up, he did the opposite of that and really lifted his team up. It was, it was pretty exciting to see. Great performance. Not statistically, but... Great but performance the from what you what you want to see from a guy who has to battle from a little adversity early in the game. Yeah, absolutely. You echo a lot of my thoughts as well. Is that like when he had to use his legs to get it done, he got them in position, right? He sailed a pass or two that I thought maybe he should have had a little bit more under control. I think he got let down by his protection at times. I, I know there was one uh, one that got to him that I think should have been picked up by the back. There's always something. But he persevered. And so my question to you, I think we both saw that ball game the same way. Um, and, and kudos to Texas for what they're doing. The depth. I thought Card played well in Ewer's absence. We all know there's a Manning on the roster as well. There's, there's a lot of depth there. This is going to be an interesting turnaround for Texas in the next couple of years. But that ball game, watching Bryce and watching what CJ did, does this change your number one quarterback on your rankings right now? No, nah, not not yet, right? We have to nope. see more from these guys. I think we've seen high-level play from both guys. And, again, I, I kind of value a quarterback that has to go through some type of adversity, overcome that, and still get the W. That was big time by him. I think, you know, C.J. Stroud, he just had to go through some adversity in the previous week where there were people mm -hmm. that weren't quite exactly happy. With his performance, including one that's on the show, Ryan Tracy, right? You're saying, you know, yeah. wasn't the greatest of performances by C.J. Stroud. So uh, you like to see these guys battle through adversity. But right now, I still kind of have those guys at the top. I'm still high on Will Levis. I think he has to kind of come through for me because he's kind of in my roughed up session right now. Uh, there was one quarterback that we both spoke on last week, and you talked about the situation with him at Michigan and, and how, well, head coach Jim Harbaugh, he can't pick a quarterback. Well, he had the youngster, J.J. McCarthy. He played, he started against uh, Hawaii. Now, will that be something that continues? Will he be the guy that's kind of in there? We'll see, but he completed 11 out of 12 passes, threw three touchdowns. I get it. It's against Hawaii, and they are not great right now. This is a team that just got their heads beaten by, uh, who is it, uh, Vanderbilt the, the, oh, a couple of weeks ago. So not a great opponent but maybe they're just trying to see okay what can this young guy do with a little bit more extended playing time but i thought he kind of answered the bell yeah I, I agree with you and that's too bad because i think mcnamara like given what they went through last season and get into the, the to the playoff and all that like you wanted to see him succeed but clearly in the first couple of weeks it's not very close i i agree with you you want to see the competition come around so i i thought that jim uh, harbaugh had actually said that he was that the youngster was the starter. Now let's see how long that lasts. Maybe I missed that, or maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I'm really keen to see how that works out as well, because competition starts to step up here pretty quickly and we'll know rather quickly how it goes along, but that's not it. There's some other guys that made some noise. I think we can stick with the quarterbacks and we got a couple other positional players we could name as well. There's plenty more coming today.
All right, but first we want to talk to you about the good folks over at Bet Online. All right, Bet Online, that's one of my go tos when it comes to all things sports betting, and it is the number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports information this season. Find all the latest football league developments, games, matchups, and news podcasts, all that good stuff. You can find all of it, including this year's opening week games. All right, Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, scores, all that good stuff. It's the fastest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events that are going on, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. You can head over right now to the website today to use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action that are going on at Bet Online, where the game starts. Man, I, I wanted to stick with the quarterbacks, but I think what our last topic kind of made me want to jump to. That was the ball game, uh, Texas Alabama, right? The premier running backs in the country were on display. And I'm interested to see what you took away from it because I thought it was up and down on both parts. I felt like Gibbs started hot. I think he is the one who missed that block leading to that sack. I thought both guys had trouble running the ball on the day, but I was really surprised. I think they both upped their stock in the ability to catch the ball. Maybe Gibbs more than Robinson. I don't know. What do you think? I, you know, they, they both had their moments. I was watching it with my brother and we're sitting there and, you know, he's like, well, who's number one? And, you know, I'm like, well, he's a dynamic guy out of Georgia Tech and he transferred <laughs> to Alabama. And this is the first time we get to really see him against another kind of big time opponent, especially getting co compare contrast uh, John Robinson and Gibbs on the same field. But that was a pass catcher. Gibbs looked really good. The running lanes, especially early on, they just weren't there. And I don't know if it was Alabama was just in a funk. Uh, the offensive line was not creating those uh, pass uh, run lanes. They weren't they weren't having the passing lanes either. I mean, this is a guy who was getting kind of beat up everywhere he was trying to go. And you saw him trying to make things happen, but it just wasn't there. So B. John Robinson, I thought he was a little bit more consistent, especially with the passing game. That was one thing I was surprised to see. I didn't know the level of pass catcher that he can – be, but he caught passes in space, made guys miss. I think that was something that will really kind of translate to the next level. So we start comparing these guys, seeing how does their game translate to the NFL. I think they both showed good stuff, but yeah, clearly not either one of their best outings. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But I was really impressed with Gibbs' quickness. Um, not a guy that I'd seen much at Tech last year. So I, I thought they both took a step forward and, and made themselves more applicable to the, the NFL game by showing off their pass catching ability. I, I was really happy with that. Anybody else stand out to you? You know, we talked about guys who were getting kind of roughed up and Xavier Worthy didn't get roughed up. Five catches, 97 <laughs> yards. He's got room for it. Not a pro prospect uh, just yet. But again, talked about Gibbs and, you know, the running lanes weren't there. Average 2.4 yards per carry, but in the, in the passing game, he was tremendous, had 74 yards, led them in uh, receiving. But roughed up, man, Jermaine Burton, this is a guy who transferred from the University of Georgia. And when he transfers, it's like, okay, this is a big-time opportunity. Now, you got me kind of eating crow, Burton, mm. all right? Because I went on Twitter and I said, oh, this is a great situation for him going from Georgia, who's not really throwing the ball around like that, to Alabama. Alabama has Bryce Young. You know, he's a Heisman Trophy-type quarterback. He can go out there and make plays. This is going to get you a first-round grade. And Jermaine Burton, he went out there and had two catches for 10 yards. I know he had two touchdowns in the last game, but still, uh, statistically, it's not really showing out. And he hasn't been quite as productive as I think I would have thought or most people. Probably even what they are thinking at Alabama. And you look at, on the other side, with Georgia, and what they're doing, all of a sudden, I mean, they, they don't stop throwing the ball. They, yeah. They're young quarterback, or not young quarterback, veteran quarterback, Stetson Bitten, he's thrown for over 600 yards now in two games. So high level production over there at Georgia, should he have stayed? That's going to be a huge question. But when we talk about being roughed up so far, the production little lacking, we'll see if it starts to pick up the more he gets kind of acclimated to the offense. Yeah. I, I yeah, Quiet is first word that I, I wrote down for him. The only major disappointment, I thought he could have had more opportunities, could have had some yak. The big thing was the drop against Ryan Watts, who I thought had kind of an up and down day. I thought some really good plays from Watts. Maybe a couple that were that he wanted back, but I thought Burton should have been able to take advantage of that. It was the drop that bothered me the most about his game. One guy that didn't have 
any problems, anything that disappointed me about his game. I'm going to tee you up and just let you finish this whole show out because I know it'll take you a little bit. Why don't you tell me about Jordan Addis and just how good he is? We know he's great, right? I mean, this is a guy who won the Belitnikoff Award at Pittsburgh last season, transfers to USC, and he's picked off where he left off, or picked up where he left off, excuse me. He's been terrific. He's been dynamic. He's been everything that they wanted. Now, once they start getting into better competition, because that's what we haven't seen yet from yeah. USC. They've had some games where, okay, I've got these little early games. You have an opportunity to really kind of get things rolling, get in the groove, and then see how things continue to pick up from there. So far, so good with the return on Addison. I expect him to continue this and do well. You got Williams. He's doing a terrific job delivering the football. Everybody looks dynamic, but things look great when you're playing against maybe lesser competition. How is that going to continue once you start to get into Pac-12 play? And as this continues, if it does, now you're kind of starting to talk about, well, uh, or are they a playoff team? And that's what people are going to want to see from them. So, so far, so good. Addison looks dynamic, just like he did at Pitt. But can he keep it going? That's what I'm going to keep watching for. And we hope that you guys keep watching this show and not just our show. And we do definitely want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. But now, for your second listen of the day, go make my guy Brian Peacock and Williamson on their NFL show Make them your second listen, all right? Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on NFL Draft. We'll see you all tomorrow when we have our guy, John Harris, with us discuss all things college football and more. Keep it locked right here. Peace.